checkered flag in the air. And he's going to house it. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. What's going on, everybody, and welcome to another Angle of Pursuit podcast, your fantasy football, sports betting, and NASCAR home. I'm your host, Kyle Robert. You follow me on Twitter at NotoriousKRO. Uh, with me to talk our DFS lineup, build something on DraftKings, uh, tell you who to play, who to avoid, tell you what our thoughts are heading into the Goodyear 400, as well as update that betting card, talk about betting lines and matchups and props post-qualifying. It's Brian Twining. What's up, Brian? Hey, Kyle. Yeah, qualifying was pretty interesting. We were we were talking uh, prior to jumping on here. Um, the jinx of the Angle of Pursuit podcast continues as uh, Kyle's best bet from from Thursday is already in a bad spot. Um, yeah, I mean, of course, we should have known this was going to happen. Anytime we're either on a, a, a the same driver or against the same driver, it comes up to bite us in the ass. So, yep. Yeah. We talked about Joey Logano on Wednesday. We're like, Oh yeah, his car looks bad. He doesn't look very good. He looked, seemed really disappointed with kind of the direction. Of course he gets the pole. And of course the guy we fade him for Kevin Harvick, who's awesome at this track. Can't even get his freaking car on the, on the track to run to even <laughs> try to qualify. It's it's been a mess, and then Denny Hamlin's having more tire issues. It's just, it, uh, it, I don't. I mean, and and Toyotas were so fast too in practice and qualifying. Like Toyotas were, you know, all there was like four or five of them inside the top ten, which was pretty interesting to see. But if Denny yep. Hamlin's pit crew can't get their shit together, I I mean, no like, crew chief for the next. Although he probably has his crew chief here, they're probably. They're probably like they're probably uh, appealing or something. Yeah, appealing the crap. suspension, and then they'll figure it out. But yeah, it's yeah. it's interesting for sure. Um, but yeah, as I mentioned, we're gonna talk some DFS. We're gonna build a DraftKings lineup, and let's do that now, Brian. As we dive right in, I will share my screen, and we can be off and running on a week where there's gonna be some interesting stuff to get into. So. As you see, jumping off from the get-go is Kyle Larson. Uh, I already have an outright on him. I think he's going to be amazingly uh, popular this week. I also think he's amazingly fast, and I think he's going to be worthy of that uh, pro projected ownership coming in at almost 50%, uh, but worth it. I, I think it's going to be hard to, to not win with him because I expect him to run really well. Um, I expect him to dominate a lot of laps and just kind of be the guy you need from the jump. Um, obviously, if you are building several lineups and you want to avoid him in one or two, I think it makes sense. He, he all of a sudden he has an accident and half the field's out of the way. So, and, you know, it depends also, you know, are you doing terminate? Are you doing cash? Yeah. Um, all these things we take into, into, uh, into, 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 into context and when you're making lineups, but. At 11,000, he is your clear front runner. Right behind him, Chase Elliott, 10-6. Starting 34th, going to be incredibly popular as well. Uh, have a chance to move up, have a chance to earn a lot of points. As you mentioned with the Toyotas, Martin Truex is next. Uh, looked really fast, really good. 10-5, uh, Denny Hamlin, 10-3. Uh, William Byron, 10-1. So we'll stay in that, in that uh, range. In the in you know 10k and up, what what name slash names are jumping out to you the most as to either jump on board with or to fade? I I keep doing this. Uh Denny Hamlin starting 22nd at 10 3. Yeah. I know he's gonna be extremely popular, but if his tires can stay on the car, um the amount of success that he's had at this track, he's won three mm. times, I think, in the last 10 races or something like that. So I really think Hamlin is going to have a good run. So starting from where he is, I think I think he's up near the top of the field by the end of stage one and competing for the lead and yeah. and could potentially get you dominator points too with all of those movement points. So I think he's my favorite among the 10K and up guys. Yeah, I think getting the 10K range is going to be the most important thing because there's tremendous values like Chase Elliott, like Kevin Harvick, and even Hamlin to, to move up to gain a lot of ground to be top five, maybe even potentially win the race. Um, obviously, starting 34th and 35th for Elliott Harvick, it's going to be a lot harder. 
um, but they can definitely do it. I guess though they're not in the 10 K race. Sorry. I was looking Harvick's uh, we're not quite there, but, but with Elliot um, and Hamlin, they're both in 10 K and then obviously Truex starting fourth um, is going to be a really nice value. It'll be interesting to see how people, cause you know, if you, if you go Larson, you can't go Truex. I, I don't think you can double up right there. No. Um, I think if you're going to another person, in the 10 K range, you have to find somebody, who can uh, who can make a difference now? William Byron at ten one, I think is going to be one of the lower owned guys this week. I think he's going to. I don't think he's going to get nearly the uh, projections. I don't think people will be all over him. Um, starting ninth still has a great chance to win. Obviously, could be a sneaky way if you want to pivot, but um, you know, uh, it. it I, th- I feel like people will kind of jump over him, and if they're going to go down that low, they're going to go lower and find some salary savings. Yeah, and I think, too, uh, I'm just looking at, like, past races at Darlington. It's interesting to note that Chevrolet hasn't won a race at the Lady in Black since 2014, and it was actually Kevin Harvick in the ride who has won twice after that in a Ford. So you're looking at Hendrick Motorsports being shut out of this track for quite some time here, and now you got the two of them inside as the two most expensive dudes, and then you got Byron inside the top five here. So I don't know if this is a week you fade Hendrick completely or I mean, that would be a bold call, Bob, but uh, let's see how it works out for him. Well, like, and I think to that point, I, I wasn't going to say this. I mean, it's kind of disgusting to talk about as we both picked against them. But like, if you go to a Hamlin inside that 10 in or above that 10 K range, you, I think you have to pivot and go Joey Logano for your dominator at only 9,200 starting the race first. I mean, he's, he's had great success here too. Great success. Uh, yeah, I, and I think he will be a little bit lower owned. I think going Hamlin Truex and just loading up on Toyotas could be another interesting way to go. That's not going to be quite as quite as popular. But yeah, it's a it's going to be a very interesting week. I think um, you'll want to build a few lineups and kind of have a, a few different ways of attacking. Let's dive into that 9K range and, and keep going down. We got Kyle Busch. At nine nine, um, yeah, I don't know what the questionable tag means. Yeah, like, well, how does the maybe, driver? Maybe you can do a quick Twitter search. See if Bob Pockress has anything for us. Maybe he's got a car issue where he might have to start in the back or something. Uh, Chastain starting eighth at ninety seven. Alex Bowman, who might have our fa- favorite paint scheme this week, just because of the homage to Mark Martin. It looks really cool on his car. I'm really proud of what, uh, you know, really, really uh, impressed by what Hendrick did. You know, obviously yeah. the. The throwback Jeff Gordon looks great on William Byron's car. I think the unique angle of Mark Martin's scheme on on Alex Bowman looks great, and then you know Larson looks good, and Elliott looks good too. Uh, yeah, yeah, real quick on Kyle Busch. Uh, apparently, he's expecting the birth of his child. Oh, so he may so not run. They have Trevor Bain um, on standby to fill in for him wow. as a possibility. Yeah, yeah, that's that's <laughs> interesting. I'm gonna, I, I will, I'm cur- I bet it really affects his ownership. So, if oh, you want to, yeah. If you want to do one lineup with Kyle Busch in there, um, that could be an interesting way to go. But yeah, man, if Tra- Trevor Bain starts and it's there's nowhere to go but back, so that might just <laughs> yeah, be exactly. a dead weight well, to I avoid. Wonder, I wonder if they change a driver if he has to go to the rear of the field. I don't know what those rules are, but that's a Bob Pockris question. That's a that's <laughs> people people that have been following the sport a lot longer than I do. But uh, yeah. I, I'm thinking it's a it's. You qualify the car, you don't qualify the driver, if that makes sense. But I could yeah, be completely yeah, yeah, that makes sense. talking out of my ass. Uh, Alex Bowman, yeah. So Ryan Blaney, your, your guy, 9,400. Joey Logano, as we mentioned, sitting on the pole, 9,200. Could be an interesting way to go if you think he's going to dominate a lot of laps. Obviously looked incredibly fast. Um, if he can put that together all day on Sunday, that I mean, you won't win without him. So that yeah, that could be a good way to go. Uh, we got Harvick or Tyler Reddick rather um, at 9K. So uh, I think Tyler Reddick is I mean, before you even ask, Tyler Reddick is my favorite guy in the in the 9K range starting 10th. I think he has a good shot at winning this race. Um, he ran in Xfinity. He was running extremely well until he got a little bit too close to the wall. I mean, he's known as the wall rider. Yep. And uh, rubbed the wall, wound up crashing and finishing outside the top 10 in Xfinity. But knowing that he got that extra, you know, 100 plus laps of experience here going yep. into tomorrow, that's going to pay off huge going into Sunday's race. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, no, I think that's a good call. I think he's definitely an interesting option. Um, yeah, I, I think diving into the next range. Obviously, our guy Chastain is always in play. He's starting eighth, which, you know. At this he's... point, how do you not, like, I, I don't know about DFS. I mean, he's yeah, starting he may a be bit. more of just let's attack him on DraftKings and yeah. not so much, or at the, at the betting window, not so much on DraftKings. Yep. Uh, we'll dive into that 8K range. As I mentioned, Kevin Harvick starting 35th, a guy who's done so well at this track. He's going to be hard to avoid, um, but will be incredibly, incredibly yes. popular. Um, you know, looking at projected ownership right now, it's Larson at almost 50%, uh, Harvick at almost 45%, and then Chase Elliott at just below 40 So those are going to be the, the popular guys. So you probably don't want to start a lineup with all three of them. Let me uh, just want, one one little note on Chase Elliott. He's crashed in two of the last four Darlington races. Yep. So I mean, uh, he's either running into Brad Keselowski or maybe <laughs> Cody Ware. Or he's <laughs> crushing our Eric Jones hopes. Yes, exactly. Um, no, nah, that's, that's funny. Um, yeah, so Kevin Harvick, really compelling, obviously. Austin Dillon starting 14th. Christopher Bell starting third, qualified strong again. Let's see if he can put it together no. for the whole race why why can't he qualify like 10th and then we can put him in the lineup for hopefully moving up whereas yeah. the only way he's going here is probably down mm -hmm. jace briscoe starting 13th um and we'll even dive into 7k because i think these guys are all kind of the same because oh, yeah. suarez eric jones kurt bush with the 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 old school red and yellow looks pretty sweet and um of these options which ones stand out to you the most I mean, obviously, you got to go with Harvick at the top of the list there, but among the guys that are below him, I mean, I really like Eric Jones this week to potentially sneak into the top 10 for a third straight week. Um, yeah. But it's hard yeah. with him starting 11th. Like, there's really not, me there's not much he can do better. Yeah, once that. again, probably a better betting window pick yeah. and less of a DraftKings play. I kind of like Cindric at 19 because mm -hmm. he's the cheapest of the guys and he, he has the skill level to get inside that top 10. I loved him last week. If it wasn't for the rain delay, which I, which I was happy about at the time to watch racing on Monday, but yeah, uh, it kind of cost him. Yeah. If I had to rank him, it would be Harvick. Number one, it would be Cindric number two. Um, and then probably chase Briscoe number three. I think he's starting far enough back where he can make up some distance. I think he's kind of quietly had a much better season. I think a oh, lot yeah. of people um, expected, obviously got the win um, and has been right there. Like he, he was the one that spun Reddick out when they both crashed. Um, so I think, I think he's also a solid option that I think could be a little overlooked um, and end up being a nice, uh, a nice value come Sunday. As we dive even deeper, uh, Busher, Stenhouse, Bubba, who looked pretty solid. Um, He's looked pretty good the last couple of weeks. Yeah. Starting to be a little more consistent than just yep. the super speedway guy. Uh, Cole Custer's and my guy from last week starting 28th. Hemrick. Uh, I'm just naming names at this point. But, you know, anything below, you know, here's Trevor Bain. So my guess is... Uh, if Bush doesn't start, then Trevor Bain is the guy. So you'll want to uh, revisit these closer to uh, to to the start of the race. Obviously, Brian and I are recording this Saturday, so we don't know. You may know when you're setting lineups yeah. and watching this Sunday morning. So, you know, adjust accordingly. But I, I think even if I mean, Kyle Bush, I I'm fine with if he starts, but I, I, I want no part of Trevor Bain. Yeah, it, I mean, Christopher Busher at 6,900, starting 18th. He's top 10 here uh, each of the last two trips. He's looked better of late. He's ha He's been fast at each of the last few tracks, um, and that's a pretty good price for somebody who's been running. And as a team in, in, in general, RFK has looked a lot better lately. Yeah, no, I think that's, I think that's a good call. Um, I'm just pulling up uh, a nugget I was going to pull, but... Um, what about Ricky Stenhouse? Interesting option. Obviously, starting 26th, you, you know our conundrum. A lot of times it feels like he's running great until he's not. But <laughs> starting 26th, I could see him having, you know, he looked, he, I could see him having a, 
strong performance um, and, and, you know, rewarding those who used him. Um, I feel like he could be an interesting name. Yeah, it's just hard to get to Stenhouse knowing like how how good a chance it is that he's either going to spin out or crash or something bad is going to happen. And knowing that his best finish here at Darlington is 12th way back yeah. in 2018. And since then it's 17th. So it's not like he's been competitive near the top 10. No, so think- but he his last four runs started 39th, finished 25th, started 29th, finished 19th, started 28th, finished 20th and started 29th, finished 17th. So, you know, obviously you don't feel like he's going to win the race, but there's a good chance that he's inside yeah. that top 20, maybe even flirting with a top 10. And that may be OK down here, depending on what you're doing elsewhere. Um, and if you want to just, you know, have somebody like that, that could be a could be an interesting way to go. But, yeah, I don't I just a, a name that kind of jumped out a little bit to me. Um you know, as we even go down below here, our, our guy, Corey LaJoy, starting 30th, sub 5,000. If you want to get aggressive at the top, um, could be a fun way to go. Obviously, he could be a mess, too. But starting 30th, it's going to be hard for him to really um, yeah. absolutely derail your lineups. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I'd probably I'd probably go to a Ty Dillon starting 21st, just hoping that he stays around that mark, maybe even gets moves up a little bit at 5,100. I feel like he'd be a little bit safer than LaJoy. I think he's got a little more pace in that car. Yeah. And uh, I, I mean, he's finished 13th, 21st, 20th, 19th, 19th, and 27th in his six career cup series events at Darlington. All not great, but all not the worst. And, you know, at 5,100, if you could just maintain, you're probably getting 20 points. Yeah, yeah, I think Dylan, I think LaJoy, I think Justin Haley. Um, and honestly, it, all of these guys could wind up absolutely sucking ass. It's yeah. 2022, and the car has made a giant difference. So you, there's a world where we could see some wacky uh, cautions coming out and guys on uh, lap, multiple dudes on uh, lap down, and yeah. Daniel Hemrick is inside the top 10 because he didn't pit like – this this race could get a little interesting tomorrow. Let's build the lineup, Ryan. Um, and I will make the first selection. I, I think this week we're going to do, I think we're going to build two lineups because I think there's yeah. a lot to go through. And I don't want, I mean, I don't want to box us in, but I guess we could build one and see how we go. Uh, I'm going to put Kyle Larson in. I, I, oh, I, I feel it. like you're one of two strategies. Either you go Larson uh, expect him to do well, expect him to dominate, expect him to be the guy you need, or you completely punt him and you go with Logano or somebody else who you think can lead early Truex um, mm-hmm. and figure it out from there. So Lar- Larson is our first option. You can pick anyone else you'd like. Let me know where we're going. Okay. Our, uh, I have to know. This is a GPP, like 150. Yes, we're, this is our tournament. So. You know, okay. if you want to be, we're, we're obviously going Larson, who we think can be dominant, but he's also going to be very, very popular. Yeah. So, so I if think you want to go off the rails, starting with the second driver, let's fucking roll. So I feel at this point, you almost, you can't add Harvick. I, like you're putting yourself in too many mm-hmm. of the same basket if you have both of the highest. Yeah. I don't think you people. can have, like, I don't, if we go Larson, I don't think we want to go Harvick and Elliot. Um, I mean, we could maybe, but I think we should try and find a way to be a little bit different and then. All right, let's make this interesting. Put put Denny Hamlin in there and let's see what we can build. I like it. Um, Let's double Toyota up and see how we can do salary wise. How aggressive we want to be, because I, I, you know, I I mean, we I mean, we mentioned a few guys down here we like. I'm I'm happy to you know we can sw- if we if we're trying to make something work and it's just not working we can obviously pull Truex out but I really like Truex this week I think having that other dominator option is really interesting um, and we could and be as looking long as at they stay inside like the top ten you're not going to be losing too many right, points exactly yeah and I think he could, I think they could both be fighting um, I think you could have one either of them could win. I think they could both dominate a bunch of laps. 
Um, and if we're and we're going with our Toyota seven really fast theory, um, I, I think Hamlin and Truex are, are a great combo. All right. So for salary saving reasons, let's let's add Ty Dillon, just hoping he stays okay. at that twenty something spot for you know Sounds fifteen good. to twenty points. Uh, for more salary savings, I know you hate it, but Corey LaJoy. Oh man. Yeah, I mean, I want to get real gross this week. Yes. Uh, but that gives us a lot of flexibility for our final guy. So, you know, we could basically anywhere from here down. So I think the names for at least for me, Briscoe jumps out, Eric Jones, eh, <sighs> Austin Sindrick, uh, and Ricky Stenhouse. So Austin Sindrick, Ricky Stenhouse, Chase Briscoe are th- I think my top three. I think for placement points and just safety. Um, even though he crashed or he crashed out last week, I think we got to go Austin Sindrick starting 19th, 7,100. Love it. I think he can get inside the top 10, whereas Ricky Stenhouse Jr. cannot. Yep. I like it. I, yeah. We're, we're, we want safety. We don't want somebody who could spin out on the first lap and or last <laughs> yeah. lap. Uh, let's build one more. Um, and let's punt Larson. So I will give you the T this time and anyone but Kyle Larson is available. Who would you like? I mean, it's, it's gross, but let's go Joey Logano at the top. Okay. I like it. That's a way to be different. Um, I, I, I mean, just think about this for, for, for a second though. He's starting first. If yep. he jumps out to the lead and he, I mean, this is the kind of and track. We've seen where you it, could, right. We've yeah. seen it all season with this car. If you can be in the front, you yep. can pull away from the pack. That's what I'm saying. Like he could lead the entire first stage and yep. you have, a, and you have like 90 laps led yep. already and he in, was in the book. Dominant in, in qualifying. Like he, yeah. looked, I think he was smashing the the best records by, you know, 30 seconds uh, or, uh, you know, a, a half a second to a second. So yeah, no, I, I think it's a great call. I put Hamlin in um, as the next guy. I, I All right, I think we got to go. I uh, we got to go Harvick. Like I. Okay. Yep. No, I think that's smart. To, it's either going to have to be Larson or Harvick is going to have to be in your lineup. I like it. I think this yep. week. You don't need both, but you should. You know, it's okay to eat a little chalk. You just don't want to eat it all. Yeah. You want to look like you just ate a, a thing of powdered donuts. Um. <laughs> now we have some fun room. We can go real low. We can go real high. We have. Uh, we're, you know, we're, we're messing around in the seven K range. Um, our guy, Ross Chastain, we could go up to him and then try and figure it out. We could look at someone like Justin Haley. Um, you know, we already did a little joy and Ty Dillon. So I kind of want to go to some other cheap options. What about my guy, Cole Custer, 6,300 starting 28th, uh, looked good last week. I don't expect him to win. But can he give us a 17th? I think so. I mean, he, two of the last three trip series finished 12th or better. 12th in uh, 2020 and 11th at the fall race here. So if I we mean, can, get can get a get anywhere near top 10 performance out of Cole Custer, we're going to be Woo! loving life. And two, what interesting, like last week. So the choice on Custer to top 10 wound up actually being the right direction to go even those qualifying sucked i mean he finished 15th he drove great in the last stage yep yep i yep all right so we have 77 so we could do a combination of higher guys so we could just go down and you know throw throw I mean, in since since we're getting a little a little crazy this week i think this is the one because it is a gpp Let's go ahead and add Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Starting Love it. Love it. Yeah. I mean, if we're going to shoot for it, let's shoot for it. So, yeah. Ricky Stenhouse, welcome to the team. So now we have 8,700. We could we could do all kinds of fun stuff. Uh, Austin Dillon's there. Christopher Bell's there. Chase Briscoe. Brad Kay. Um, Sindrick at 19th is also compelling. Cause we're, I mean, somebody you know, who's probably going to be fairly low rostered is... Uh, our buddy whose name we just recently learned how to say correctly at the beginning of this season, Chris Busher. Yeah. Starting 18th. Yeah. Let's do it. That's another way to be different, right? Leave salary on the table, like leave salary on the table. Yeah. Leave almost 2k on the table, but I like this lineup a lot. I, I think it has a lot of potential. 
I think Logano can dominate even if he doesn't win the race, be your early dominator. And then you're and then hoping... we have winners of four of the last five events at yeah. Darlington and uh, Hamlin and Harvick in the same lineup. And Harvick is a guy that you're probably going to need if he has a great race. He's going to yeah. make, you know, move up. He could easily top 10, maybe even top five. Um, yeah, I, I like this. And then you just need these guys to not kill you. Not suck. Yeah. And Ricky Senhouse could be like third. We could be looking at like stage two and he's like third. Um, <laughs> we could be looking at stage three and he could be 33rd, but you know. Yeah, exactly. We're shooting for the million dollar uh, prize pool, right? Like we're not trying exactly. to double up here. So I like it. We'll see how these go. We obviously, Brian and I will be back on uh, Wednesday to record. And then we'll obviously, or yeah, Wednesday. And then we'll be in your feed on Thursday. Uh, we'll review our bets. We'll review our DraftKings. We'll see where we're at. We'll try and figure some stuff out um, and go from there. So let's take a look at where we're at, Brian, as we head into, uh, you know, all these bets are pre qualifying. Uh, I went Kyle Larson at five to one, loving having that two units, Hamlin eight to one, a unit there, Hamlin top five at even money or plus a hundred, even money basically. Kevin Harvick top five, two to one. I'm probably gonna get a better number, and I might double down. We'll see. Uh, Chastain, that was that has to be top five, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we were looking, DraftKings wasn't super friendly to us but i think we'll be okay uh we found a good number in eric jones top five at six to one so i i took that uh eric jones to win the race at 50 to one Woo. Um, we were looking at his numbers his recent performance thinking maybe that could work um and then i went harvick over reddick jones over busher chastain over logano and then my best bet was harvick over logano which is um at this point looking terrible you know but you know what i'm not gonna do i'm not gonna double and triple down on a bad call that instead of losing three units, I'm going to lose 12 units and lose on DraftKings. <laughs> so, um, you know, if it works, it works. If it doesn't cool. Um, but I think it is a move that makes set made sense at the time. He's been so good. He just, you know, can't, can't get your car on the track. Can't qualify. This is how it works. Um, as you can see, Brian is Hamlin also on the outrights Jones on the outrights, Austin Dillon on the outrights, Kyle Larson on the outrights. Uh, Tyler Reddick, he's just really spraying the board this week. And Christopher Bell. You love to see it. Um, and then Harvick top 10, Reddick top 10, Jones top 10, Jones over Busher, Bell over Briscoe, and Harvick over Logano. Um, do we have a show bet yet? I don't, no, I don't think we've, we've, okay. we've well, maybe we decided could, maybe we on one. Find one as, uh, as Brian was, I'm sure, I'm sure forgot to set up. Uh, my, oh, I am absolutely crap. crushing him in the show bets, but <laughs> he refuses to tally it. So that's fine. It's just <laughs> pe the people know they see. Uh, let's look at the current odds and see what kind of values pop out. As you can see, Larson is still at five to one. Um, I would happily bet that. I think it's a good number. Truex at seven and a half. Kyle Bush at seven and a half. I'm guessing if he doesn't run, they just void the bet. Um, even though his car's out there. Logano at eight to one is interesting. He's obviously sitting on the pole. He could have got a better number pre qualifying, but to see him where he is, I think it's interesting. Uh, Blaney still 10 to one. I mean, we, we, I think we've both kind of taken a break on betting his outrights, at least for now. Yeah. Hamlin at 10 to one is really interesting. That's a great number. Yeah. I mean, what did we, we bet him at, got him at, at eight. eight? So yeah, getting 10 to one. I think that's a little bit of too too much of an overreaction to uh, qualifying status. I mean, obviously, if they're having issues keeping tires on the car, like no. that's going to be a horrible bet. But if they get their crap together, you're looking at a top five contender. Hundred percent. Uh, two top ten starters: William Byron and Ross Chastain, both twelve to one. Jace Elliott twelve to one, despite starting what thirty fourth or something. That's pretty yeah. interesting. Um, I think they just get money on some of the like. Chase Elliott, Kyle Larson, Martin yeah, Truex. Well, I mean, like some of the people are going to bet names. It's just like yeah. in other traditional sports, mm -hmm. like certain like teams. Betting the are Cowboys better. or betting the Packers. Yeah, exactly. Um, but of these odds, of these numbers, is there anything jumping out to you? Anything that, I mean, Harvick's still only seven to one to top five. So that's kind of interesting. Or is that top three? That's top three. When, didn't we bet him to top five? 
He's three to one the top five. Oh, uh, okay. So that's better than what we got. But I don't, I don't know if it's remarkably better considering it's starting 35th. Um, yeah, it. I mean, Harvick has had so much run at this track. I think the only thing that's going to hurt him is the fact that uh, this is a new car. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, his experience here is going to pay off Sunday. I don't know if he'll have what it takes to get up to the front at 30 to 1, but I still like his, his placement numbers, like, seven to one to top three for a guy who as is as good as he is here. Yeah. Like, I think that's definitely worth putting, you know, a quarter unit or half a unit on depending on whatever your units are. But yeah, he's just so damn good at this track. Yeah, no, I think it makes sense. Um, Alex Bowman at 25 is kind of interesting to me. It's not, I don't know that I'm going to put it on the card quite yet, but it, it, it seems like when you kind of look at the names and see the prices, it seems a little bit out of place. Yeah, I I feel like too. Uh, like for me, a guy like Tyler Reddick, uh, his number is a little bit longer at uh, like the offshore where I got it, or like earlier in the week. Yeah. But him and like Chastain at twelve to one and fourteen to one, those are the kind of guys that I think can potentially win here because they're mm -hmm. unafraid to keep the throttle down going into the corners where you see a lot of guys lifting in order to prevent their cars from hitting. The, you know, from getting that Darlington stripe, whereas, yeah. you know, Tyler Reddick is unafraid of yep. scraping and the wall. Both and running really well. Run. They both have had like, like legit winning opportunities the past exactly. couple weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Like this could easily be the Tyler Reddick culmination. He finally gets his win. So I like that call. I did play some NASCAR heat this morning and nice. one, uh, one, um, one Darlington with Corey LaJoy. So that was fun. Yeah, you're playing Heat, and I'm still playing Thunder 04 on my emulator. Qual qualified on the pole, won the race. It was it was nice. Um, okay, Eric Jones is now 60 to 1. I, I don't hate that. I think it's I don't understand how his odds went down after he qualified 11th. Yeah, that's that might be like another half unit just for, for gigs. But well, uh, what's super interesting about that, you look at his numbers. He's he's five to one to top five. Yeah. Which is worse than what you got it at at six to one with yep. better with a better outright number. Yeah, that's interesting. Or with a worse outright number. They're like, oh, he's you know, we don't think he's gonna win the race. So we'll give you this juice step number. Yeah. But uh we do think there's a chance he finishes around fifth because he's been <laughs> mar marching so that way. Uh, let's look at the top ten market to see if there's any anything that we really want to hammer like a lot of these numbers are just like yeah put in a parlay like i was thinking about this weekend like how nice it like we have the kentucky derby we have nhl and nba playoffs we have nascar and we have formula one it's a big sports weekend and we have multiple double headers in major league baseball because yeah. of all the rain outs so there's just like so much stuff to bet on it's glorious uh austin Sindrick, we talked about a little bit about him Going back to him at plus 180 to top 10 isn't worth. Ricky Stenhouse, two and a half to one, is going on the card. <laughs> that, uh, I, I'll, yeah. I'll let you play the, the spinner game by yourself this week. Please, I will take the, I will take Tasmanian Devil. Um, hopefully he can keep it on the track. But uh, plus 250 is a nice, a nice option for a guy that if he performs well, um could easily top 10 justin haley to top 10 isn't the worst i think Sindrick and stenhouse this might be my favorite like, combo of numbers of course, I think for me, um just for like show purposes i'm gonna add christopher bell top 10 minus 120 mm -hmm. um it he's starting to come around. You're starting to see what I thought we were going to see at the beginning of the year where I bet him to win, I think over one and a half races this year, which is not looking great. Yeah. Um, but at close to even money qualified fourth, I think, or, or third, something like that. He, the Toyotas look great so far. Toyotas have dominated at Darlington in the past. So I think bell has a good shot to top 10 and at close to even, that's a pretty good bet for me. Yeah, no, I think that, I think that makes sense. Um, featured matchups. Anything that we want to? This is interesting. 
um, obviously qualifying impacting that. But Truex is somebody that people were kind of on a little bit. Uh, Stenhouse over Busher, I don't hate. Um, I don't know how. Th- I'm guessing if Kyle Busch doesn't run, this probably just gets voided. Yeah, they would have to. Look at that. JGR favored over Hendrick. Wow. That's wild. And isn't. Yeah. Wow. That would I mean, be again, old... like I said, just look at Chevrolet has done nothing. Yeah. At Darlington. So. Yeah. No, I, I, I mean, do we go with history or do we go with a team? You know, the, the, the. Group. I mean, even last year, though, think about it. Hendrick dominated the sport last year, and it was Truex Jr. and, and Hamlin that won the races. Yeah. Um, okay. I did want to throw up for Giggles uh, a little Formula One action if people are trying to um, build a little parlay. Let's see here. Let's go to the Miami GP. Uh, Leclerc is your favorite and obviously qualified on the poll. Uh, plus 140. I don't know what's going on with Carlos Sainz. He's starting to look like uh, Nikita Maz has been out there and just like crashing every freaking race. And I was qualifying. just going to say, it's like every week now. Um, Verstappen at plus money is interesting. And maybe not outrights, but top five, six, top threes and top sixes, I think is what they do. Uh, like you could do a podium finish on Lewis uh, or George um, at pretty good numbers and Mercedes seems to be finding some things. So um, just a little, a little extra thought to, um, to your betting card weekend. If you want to get real loose with it, you want to do a little double up, a little Kyle Larson, Max Verstappen. Actually, I'll do that. Let's go with it. Let's throw a, let's go winner. Let's go Max Verstappen. Let's go motorsports and we'll go down to NASCAR and we'll Kyle Larson, and we'll look at the odds. Four, four, plus fourteen ninety, it's almost fifteen to one. Um, I'm gonna throw, I'm gonna throw a quarter unit on that just for for Larson. Stop and um, I mean. If we're not having fun, what are we doing, right? <laughs> True. Um, speaking of having fun, Brian, we did some DFS. We did some betting. We even got into the F1 streets. There's only one thing left. We have to give the people our best bet that is surely to lose based on how we've been doing. But um, what is your best bet for the good year 400 at Darlington? So, uh, he was a late addition. He's been, like I said, he's been running great. He's driving the car model that's been dominating at this track. I'm going back to Christopher Bell, top 10, close to even money at minus 120 as my best bet as we sit here on Saturday. Yeah. In addition to him being better than Chase Briscoe, which was my best bet on our on our race, on our early show this week. Yeah, I think it makes sense. I think it's a good bet. Um, I'm going to go Kevin Harvick to top 10, minus 125. We're getting a little um, aggressive, or I guess we're getting a little um, like a little safer. But we're just trying to hit winners. We're trying to have some fun, um, you know, build that bankroll. So I will take Harvick, a driver that I believe in. Just because he didn't get to qualify doesn't mean he's not going to be fast. Doesn't mean he's not going to be good in the street in the um, in the car. So I will take uh, Kevin Harvick to top ten as my best bet. And hope that he can um, get in front of Joey Logano if it helps our bets, if it helps our DFS. Um, that's Brian Twining. I'm Kyle Robert. Make sure you smash the thumbs up. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you leave a comment. Let Subscribe, us know who you think your winner is. And if we hit 500 subs, which we're on our way there, before the NASCAR playoffs, this Christopher, speaking of Christopher Bell, this Christopher Bell signed mini helmet will be in the mail to you if you are the the winner. So we'll do some sort of contest. Once we get to 500, uh, we'll pick a winner. We'll send it off, and you will get to um, have that on your mantle, have that in your man cave, wherever you happen to uh, want to put it, put it on your desk at work, um, all that good stuff. Uh, 
Enjoy the weekend. Enjoy all the sports. And we'll talk to you guys next week.